Hello. This series of easy to follow videos will introduce you to our MP Lab machine learning dev suite and demonstrate how simple it is to create your own machine learning model using our development tools. The first step is data collection. We will be using MP Lab data visualizer for data collection. The documentation for this project includes a step by step guide on how to do this. But before we begin collecting data, we need to set up the board, which in this case is the SAM D21 Curiosity Nano Evaluation Kit. The accelerometer sensor needs to be connected from either a data gateway interface, also known as DGI, or a standard serial port. Next, we will set up this device for data collection. We will first load the IMU sensor JSON file, then set the appropriate baud rate, which in this case is 115200, and then click the run button. At this point, we should see the sensor signals on the DV screen. We can then freeze and save a particular signal range in CSV format for the next model building steps. We will identify our region of interest using the mark button in the right. And once we are satisfied with the signal, we will save it using the snapshot button in either CSV or JSON for format. This is time series data, where we have identified event periods based on what information we want to collect. An event might be continuous, such as walking, or triggered, such as counting steps. Each event period will be labeled as a specific class. Based on different classes of sensor data we are collecting, we need to collect enough examples per class to cover almost all variations. This will help the model to better generalize on the training data. We are now ready for data preparation. To start building a ML model in MPLAB machine learning development suite, we need to log in and open our project directly from the home page. We will first need to set up items such as user sessions, metadata, and sources of sensor data such as a gyroscope or accelerometer. Once we are satisfied with our target labels and metadata, we, we will save our settings and our training data pipeline is ready to go. The project summary page gives us an overview of the whole project. We can edit the image and the project description to provide more context about the project. The tab also provides information about queries, pipelines, models, and project settings. 
Since we have labeled all the classes with different colors in the project setting tab, next we will identify segments from the captures and assign them to appropriate events or classes. We will follow this exercise for all the capture datasets. Once that's done, we are now ready to create query pipeline, which are set of conditions on the input data. It also helps to check for data distribution across different labels. This ensures that the correct labels, metadata, and sensor sources are selected for model building. So now we are set for model building. The model building step uses AutoML to build a model that allows us to control the features we want in our device. For example, if we build an algorithm that is supposed to detect our events with 100% accuracy, the algorithm may use more resources but we can tweak the parameters in the AutoML settings to try to find an algorithm that uses half as many resources with 98% accuracy. We can configure the AutoML pipeline to maximize accuracy while fitting within a desired memory constraint, which is a powerful way to save time and money. The model building process is represented as a series of pipelines. Each pipeline is a sequence of steps representing the process of data transformation during model building. We can create a new pipeline or use an existing template based on our application. Creating a new pipeline usually means selecting the right query from the ones we have set up during the data preparation stage and then using AutoML to choose the best features. This will provide us with a set of transformation steps such as pre-processing, feature extraction, and model training. In each of the sub-blocks, we will need to set up appropriate values, a deeper insight to which is covered in the documentation. The AutoML parameters allow us to set classification criteria such as F1 score, accuracy, or AUC and upper bounds of the device's SRAM constraint. One can also optimize for feature selection or training algorithms and set the maximum iterations and population size for the AutoML. In the pre-processing step, we will assign the input query Then select the window and slide size and then apply scalar transformation. In the feature extraction step, we can select different criteria on which we want to extract feature signals. One can select all these uh, criteria and let AutoML work to find the best features. A caution here though, an approach like this will be resource intensive, so the AutoML bandwidth has to be increased. However, a little insight into the use case is always useful in selecting the extraction function here. For example, in audio related use cases, 
frequency and energy based extractions are very helpful. The feature selector helps to avoid highly correlated features and helps to select features with interesting information. The outlier filtering also helps to generalize the model by avoiding overfitting. The feature quantization step scales the uh, features in a given bounds. This helps in model training process. In the model training, we will select the classifier and then the hyperparameters of its training algorithm and finally the validation values. In general, windowing gives us the classification data size. The feature extraction extracts meaningful insights from the data segment, such as mean, standard deviation, rate, amplitude, melt frequency, etc. And we use validation to check the robustness of the model and to avoid overfitting or underfitting. Overfitting occurs when a model fits the training data too closely, while underfitting happens when a model doesn't capture the underlying patterns in the data. After we are satisfied, we click the run button on the top right, which yields top 5 models. Keep in mind that there is typically an accuracy versus resource usage trade-off. If we allocate more resources to modeling, we can build a model with higher accuracy. We can select each model to evaluate confusion matrix, feature visualization, feature summary, model summary, pipeline summary, and finally the knowledge pack summary. These steps will provide us deeper insights into the selected features and their correlations, distributions, model performance, and hyperparameters. Model testing. MPLAB machine learning development suite allows us to test our model on any file in our project to see how the model performs before flashing it to a microcontroller. It shows us the confusion matrix, ground truth versus prediction results, and the feature vector heat map to provide insights into the model's performance. In the testing part, we need to select the captures that were left out from the model training. These are usually defined in the fold column as test. We can then click the compute accuracy or compute summary to compare the confusion matrix against the ground truth classification chart and feature vector heat map. Based on this information, we can decide if the model is performing well enough. If it is, we can go ahead and deploy it in our microcontroller. If it isn't performing well enough for our application, we would go back to the data collection and model building steps to try other options. Model deployment. To run our model on our embedded device, we now need to generate a knowledge pack. We go to the download model page to locate and download a knowledge pack corresponding to our chosen compiler and microcontroller.
This knowledge pack will transform the event detection model we generated in, in our pipeline into a file that can be run on our hardware device at the edge. It will output classification IDs that correspond to our events of interest. We can view the classification results by connecting the SAM D21 Curiosity Nano board to the virtual COM port in a terminal application. Conclusion The deployment of gesture model on a SAM D21 is showcased here. Witness the seamless process of creating ML models from scratch with the MPLAB machine learning development suite. Embrace this powerful tool as you embark on your journey to build cutting-edge ML models for embedded devices. Thank you.